Good evening, ladies and gents, and welcome to episode 187 of Love at First Sense with me, Persilaise. A very, very special episode today because it's an interview episode. I know I always say the interview episodes are special, but that's because they are. But, but this is an especially special one because we have got uh, in the studio today a representative of this brand, Aqua de Palma. And I'm, I'm going to go straight to her, actually, and bring her into the studio. There is a very, very specific reason why I tried to uh, get her in the studio and was really delighted when I um, succeeded. And, and I think the best thing to do is to just bring her in uh, and, and introduce her to all of you so I can explain exactly what it was that prompted me to bring her in here. It, the, I'm very, very pleased to welcome Paola Paganini, the Product Development and Innovation Director at Aqua di Palma, who is coming to us live today from Milano. Thank you so much for joining us, Paola. Thank you to you for this invitation. It's always a pleasure to talk about Aqua di Palma, which is a, the, one of the biggest love of my life. Well, you told me a few minutes ago, actually, before we started, that you were hired by Aqua di Palma. Incidentally, Paola has been at Aqua di Palma for more than 20 years. And the, the reason why you were hired, actually, was to launch and develop Blue Mediterraneo, right? Exactly. At that time, we just had the, the Colonia, Aqua di Palma just had Colonia as a fragrance. And um, as the Aqua di Palma has been already focused on Italianity and uh, the previous shareholder would like to launch something that reminds to and can explain to a larger audience what does it mean the Italian coast, the smell of nature, the, the, the culture of the Italian coast. And so they asked me to do this, which was not quite difficult because Italian coast are fantastic. And then I, am, I live in Milano, but uh, I was born in Genoa. And my mother is from Naples, so from oh, wow. uh, Amalfi Coast. So let's say that uh, it is a little bit my world also. So it was a super nice experience. The, the mentions, you mentioning all of these amazing places is almost actually making me want to cry now because I'm thinking, oh, no, we can't, we can't travel to any of these but, places. Uh, for a few for very, months, we are For very, we very are sad Australia. reasons, unfortunately. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about Calabria for reasons that will become obvious. So I need to say to you, when was the last time you went to Calabria? Huh. You know, last time I went to Calabria, it was almost two years ago. Oh, gosh. And fortunately, as you know, then uh, everything was stopped. But uh, two years ago, but I've been in Cal to Calabria several times. And uh, because the first time I was there was just before the launch of the first Bergamotto, so in 20, in 20, in 2019, nine, nine. <laughs> time goes very fast. And um, I've been there several times and uh, every time enjoying the landscape there, the beautiful plantation of bergamot which are increasing and become every year more uh, perfect and uh, bigger and uh, the, with the quality of the fruit that is increasing that much every time and then uh, you know also from calabria you just look over the sea you see taormina in front because the sicily is super close and you see the volcano so it's a really a fantastic landscape. And when you go, your, uh, your sightsee go to the, to the mountains, it seems to be in the Dolomiti. So it's a nice. very special landscape. So um, the sea and then uh, these big mountains and uh, very, that's why there is a very special uh, climate where all these uh, citrus uh, really can live uh, beautifully. It, it is. I can. I have. Having been fortunate enough to go to Calabria once, I, I completely agree that it is a very, very special landscape. Now, the to to first of all, thank you very much to everybody for tuning in live as well. I'm sure some of you will have questions for Paula, and we will do our best to take some questions at the end. You know me. I always like to know where you're watching from. So if you if you don't mind sharing where in the world it is that you're watching from, do pop that into your question as well. But save your questions for the moment i'll tell you when it's okay to go with your questions now here's the reason the the, the main reasons why uh, the main reason why i asked paula 
to uh, to join us today. It is this. It is the Spugnatura, limited edition Spugnatura version of Bergamotto di Calabria. Not to be mistaken with the one that Paola just mentioned, the original Bergamotto di Calabria, which is now about 11 years old. It's a very, very different scent as well, actually, incidentally, if you yeah. manage to know the two. Now, Paola, I've been doing my homework, so you tell me if I'm going to get this, if, if I get this right. What's special about this one, one of the things that's special about it, is the, the extraction of the bergamot oil that's been used. The extraction is completely done by hand, by artisans in Calabria, presumably. They take a bergamot fruit, they cut it in half, they peel out the flesh of the bergamot with a special scoop-like knife. Then they take a natural sponge, which they rub all over the bergamot skin, the bergamot peel, and then they squeeze the sponge into terracotta jars where yes. the oil is stored for a while. How did I do? Is that good? Yes, good, good. <laughs> so <laughs> the, 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 most of, the first question then is, why go to all this trouble? What's the difference between the bergamot oil extracted in this way compared to the bergamot oil that we know about, you know, where the, where the, oil, the skin is pricked with the needles, etc., etc. What's yes, the difference? Yes, yes. Allora, first of all, uh, the difference is, uh, if we want to be romantic, the difference is uh, that it's done by hand, by someone who has performed this action for uh, years and years, this is uh, the first method to obtain essential oil from bergamot since uh, the beginning of uh, 18. And uh, so there is, uh, let's say, the, the know-how. It's uh, really the root of the, no the, the, of the know-how. From an olfactive standpoint, uh, is, uh, the difference is uh, that uh, this essence is more powerful and more faceted. But this is a very um, easy to be understood. Um, the reason is easy to be understood because when you scrub the, the peel of the bergamot for industrial production, the, 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 it's very fast and some molecules break, but this is normal. If you think when you make a cake at home and you just um, add some uh, lemon uh, peel, okay, it's uh, the same uh, activity, but done at uh, obviously totally different uh, speedness. And so I don't want to say that is uh, the, the one obtained by industrial production is less uh, uh, performing, it's different. The, the, the essential oil coming from La Spugnatura really is able to take with him all the facets of the bergamot fruit. You know, the bergamot fruit is uh, one of the first uh, ingredients of perfumery, historically. And uh, I was told by Mr. De Machy, Mr. Francois De Machy, who is my mentor and the person uh, that uh, uh, was able to, to, to explain me a lot of things about uh, perfumes because he knows everything. Um, bergamot in the first receipt of uh, perfume was used with the, the, you had all the quantities of the different ingredients and then at the end you had bergamot to as much as you need. It's like the salt in, in, a, in a kitchen. In a, so it's a something that really is able to give to the fragrance something special because in its oil, in this fruit, there, this is almost a fragrance by itself. If you smell the bergamot, you have citrus note, you have a floral note, aromatic note, a mineral note, which are which are in spugnatura are very well expressed, and some also some hoodie note. So with this special method, we really are able to keep all this facet and uh, 
bring it to life. Then we have built a fragrance around it, expressing and enhancing each of it, but uh, the core is already there. So, it, uh, and this was uh, a, a, an extraction method that I met during one of my trip to Calabria. When, I was going to say, how did you, how did you find, you know, how did Aqua Di Palma find out about it? Yes, but you know, uh, meeting people, talking with people, uh, always let you discover something that you didn't think, think was existing. And I discovered this just uh, chatting uh, and visiting uh, Mr. Capua plant in, uh, in Calabria. Talking with Gianfranco, he explained me about uh, this method because we were talking about uh, the ancient origins of bergamot, because, you know, the origins of the citrus and bergamot too are not well known. Probably they are coming from China. It's, it's not, it, what is almost sure is that the Arabs brought them to Europe, to the, let's say, the Western world. But where, where are they coming from is not sure. So we were talking about the past, the origin and so on, and he explained me when he arrives in Calabria, and uh, which were the first uh, uh, instruments, tools, production method that they had. And uh, he explained me about uh, this pugnatura, and I thought, uh, and I told him, Gianfranco, this is a super, super nice uh, story. We want it for, uh, for Aqua di Parma because uh, really express uh, how we can uh, mix uh, tradition and modernity, uh, how we can exploit uh, what we have in our heart and uh, in our culture and make it relevant today. Can and you can you use the can you use the spugnatura method on other citrus fruit? Does it have to be bergamot? But it has never been done. Of course, okay. we are experimenting. The, just this is just uh, something that I give you as a news. We are uh, ex painting this uh, with other citrus. We don't know if it works, if it, because I mean, uh, uh, we want to, to be, we are honest, we are authentic. Uh, we are not using this method just for communication purpose. So there should be that at the end, a product that, that has a meaning. So we are trying with a different, uh, uh, different citrus, uh, we will see what happened. <laughs> and, you okay. know, something in your drawer when you 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 have to uh, you need the things around you that um, you need to think other things. Otherwise, uh, your job is stopped. And uh, well, you are you are product development and innovation, yeah. right? So you have to. And how much of this very special bergamot oil might actually go into one bottle like this? Hey, this is a little bit a secret. You know, <laughs> the receipt of the fragrance are a little bit a secret that I, ca I can't tell you. <laughs> I had to ask. I had to ask. Yeah, so you had to ask. Yes, but this is a... But, but if you smell it, you smell a lot of bergamot in there. And you have the nose to smell it. So you can... Well, that's very kind. No, absolutely. And, and what, at what point did you decide that it was going to be a very different perfume from the original Bergamota di Calabria? Because it really is. Oh, yes. But uh, because at the, at the base, there are, let, let's say, a little bit of different inspiration. While for Bergamota di Calabria, we wanted to recreate this idea of spending time uh, and uh, uh, on, on the coast, uh, in the area, in Calabria, looking at the seaside and the, the natural uh, landscape of Calabria. Here, the concept was more on the ingredient itself and uh, the atmosphere you can smell, you can live in the bergamot field when you had a bergamot in your hands. And uh, you scratch the peel with uh, with uh, your hands. So uh, 
for the, the first Bergamotte was more around the joyful atmosphere. So we had a lot of citrus note in that uh, fragrance. Here we are more in a substantial. I don't know, I would say. So it's like the first Bergamotte is more hairy, is more uh, uh, a waterfall sensation. Here we are talking more about uh, uh, extract, I know, more uh, grounded, um, denser, if I can say. No, so, that makes that makes perfect sense. Almost like it's it's the sort of soul of it, the essence, of, yes, rather than the sort of the yes. explosion around. Um, why did you decide that you were going to give it the same name as the original? Because I would imagine some people in the marketing department would have said, oh, this is a bad idea, you know, people will be confused. Yes, yes, of course. But you know, this is a Bergamotto di Calabria. The name is like, uh, I mean, my name is uh, Paola. Tomorrow I will be all black with uh, my hair black, uh, and that, but I remain Paola. So this is uh, inside that there is Bergamot, and this is uh, the glorification of Bergamot. And uh, we just had the name La Spugnatura, which is uh, the real difference between one and the other. So, but then we have this uh, beautiful uh, bottle, uh, which is yes. also different. So this help uh, to discover uh, easily. Now, the, the bottle as well, Aqua di Parma are very, very proud of, because I know that this is a first for the brand. This is a yes. porcelain. It's a porcelain bottle rather than uh, glass. And if you go onto the Aqua de Palma website, you will see a few details about how it's made. I believe I'm right in saying that it's completely made by hand, certainly hand painted, hand decorated yes. with these white and gold designs. One question that I had about this was that, again, the, the nice people in the marketing department, did they worry that this would maybe seem a little bit too feminine and that gentlemen would think, oh, I don't, I don't want a bottle like this, or was that, not a, or are you trying to appeal more to women with this? But, you know, we, we think that uh, today, what, uh, there is uh, this uh, fluidity, you know, we, we talk about uh, gender fluidity. I think uh, we have to look at the future and not at the past, because if we keep on looking at the past, uh, we will never go ahead. Now we see men's, uh, uh, how men's fashion has evolved, how men's are today attentive to details, also in, our, in their house, they are super, sometimes even much more than women, you know, they are super uh, clean, they know, they know perfectly everything. I don't think that today, Maybe for my father could be a little bit feminine, but uh, I think that uh, this is, has been created today, but not for yesterday, for tomorrow. So I think that we should uh, stay a little bit far from uh, the codes that in the past have defined what is masculine and what is feminine, because now women are more masculine and men are more feminine. We are really mixed. I can uh, use uh, the shirt of my husband. Uh, he can use my bag uh, to the soap. That's a, no, that's a good answer. No, thank you very much for that answer. Now, I should say at this point that if you've just tuned in live, you are watching a, an interview with Paola Paganini, the Product Development and Innovation Director at Aqua di Parma. We've been talking about the new Spugnatura version of Bergamotta di Calabria, but if you've got questions that you'd like to put to Paola about anything from Aqua di Parma, start sending your questions in now and we'll try to take as many as possible. There is nothing she doesn't know about the brand and there is certainly nothing she doesn't know about the Blue Mediterranean range. Um, the, the, my final question on Spugnatura then, I suppose, is there is this long and involved and complicated process of the extraction of the bergamot. There is this very, very involved process of making the bottle. You know, you have to wait several hours for it to be colored, etc., etc. Why did you make life so difficult for yourselves with this? <laughs> we don't know. Honestly, at the end, at a certain point of the process, that... Uh, 
We had to carry on during the last year, during the, the lockdown. So you can imagine, because we were at home with this bottle. It was the last trip I made. It was in January 2020. I made it to the plant that was doing the, the bottle. It was my last trip since one year and a half. So it was a really a nightmare during that period with the, uh, why? Because uh, we think, uh, you know, we think we, we create something uh, really interesting. I mean, uh, we, we are uh, here to express uh, something different. Aqua uh, di Parma, it's not a brand uh, like all the other brands. And uh, we know we, we have a different touch points uh, that can express how we are different from other brands. One of these touch points is also the product. And uh, by nature, I don't like to make every time copy and paste. It's boring if you, if you want to... If you are in my position, it's boring to do every time the same thing, just check it. So this is boring for us, but it's really important to, to, to express something different because this brand is different. So it has been a nightmare for us, for our operation director, because, uh, I mean, porcelain is a... Is a, is a, a, a Living material, it has a lot of uh, constraints. So it's, and also for our financial director, because it's a super costly, but uh, I mean, uh, uh, we create and we try to do it uh, uh, more and more. Uh, mm, we are not for quantity, but for quality. So let's say that it's better to um, invest your time to create something uh, that is uh, really new, that really brings uh, something new to the market and uh, express uh, the purpose of the brand because uh, this is uh, very important. Uh, so our purpose is to perpetuate our Italian art de vivere and uh, craftsmanship is uh, an integral part of this. So this is really in the DNA of the brand. So it's not just a product to sell, but it's the expression of brand DNA. And as you, I said to you at the beginning of our conversation, we love the brand. Here we are a small team of passionate person and we love this brand. And uh, this is a, a way to demonstrate our love for this brand. Great, thank you. Let's take some questions from the audience. Here's a question from Paul's selection. Thank you very much for this. Will Ginepro di Sardegna have a chance to come back or any Juniper fragrance? You know, I've, I'm used to say never say never in life. And I think that the last year has shown us that everything can happen. So uh, sometimes, we are uh, obliged to make some uh, hard choice because of different reasons. Uh, because uh, unfortunately, between us and the consumer, there are I mean, it's uh, there are some constraints in uh, brands' life. At this stage, we had really a lot of fragrances. We had to focus a little bit, otherwise. Uh, we got crazy, and even for our consumer, it's uh, difficult to, to understand that we, are, we achieved uh, almost uh, 37, 38 fragrances. Uh, the portfolio is a really huge amount. So uh, for the time being, uh, we are not evaluating to come back with Ginepro, but I said you for the time being. We don't know what the future can bring us, there are today many options open, the market is changing, distribution is changing, the way to reach the consumer is changing. So everything is changing. So maybe this will be the, a chance also for Ginepro. I know we have a lot of uh, loyal consumer and lovers for Ginepro. Thank Even you. 
A, a question, actually, a very helpful question from Sotir here. We should have uh, talked about this before, uh, asking whether uh, Spugnatura is a limited edition, which I know it, it is a limited edition, but the question is how many bottles will be made? Is it a limited edition in terms of bottles? No, it's a limited edition in terms of time. Okay. So, Bergamotto La Spugnatura uh, will be sold uh, in all our distribution, but just for uh, this year. So we will uh, sell it, we are selling it now, uh, and then we will stop it. And maybe some drops in the future, we don't know. Okay, thank you. <laughs> a question from Yura. I like the question, but I wonder if it's a little bit cheeky. Is there any chance of having a boozy Aqua di Palma release, you know, like alcohol inspired, like maybe something inspired by Limoncello or something like that? <laughs> Not from Aqua di Parma, but maybe you can, if you would like, I can send you some limoncello made by my family. <laughs> Be careful when you make offers like that. Don't promise things like that. I actually think a limoncello scent, an amaretto scent, this is not, it's not a bad idea. <laughs> lemon is a nice scent. Amaretto is a little bit sweet, but uh, lemon, uh, limoncello is good. <laughs> that would be a good one. So you heard it here first. I like that one. And this one isn't so much a question, but I just loved the comment. I hope I can find it again now. Um, I'm probably not. Oh, yes, this was it from Hamlet Wong. Colonia forever reminds me of the young Sophia Loren, which I thought was a very <laughs> nice way of. of, of putting yes. It. Uh, you know, Colonia for me is a, is a really the essence of life. I mean, the, the fragrance that, uh, uh, you know, the history of Colonia, Colonia was created by Italian. So, I mean, really, and then in this uh, scent, uh, we have all the main uh, Italian notes and uh, it's an integral part of our culture. And uh, is a fragrance that is uh, so discreet, so simple, so joyful and luminous that is a scent you can wear for all, all over your life. It's like something you can have in your house and then you use a bergamot or you use Futura, you use Yuzu or some, some fragrance or from other brands. But a bottle of, there is a long day here, there is always the right day also to wear Colonia because it's something that give you this, idea of uh, home, mm. in a sense. Yeah. Now, you mentioned uh, François Demachy a few minutes ago, yes. which I was very pleased to hear you do, actually, because Demachy doesn't always get mentioned so much in relation to Aqua di Parma, yeah. even though, am I right in saying that at the moment he, he makes all of the scents, right? Yes, almost 95% uh, of the scent we have are made by Mr. Demachy and the one to that the one that uh, he didn't do by directly anyway he always uh, supervised uh, all the creation and uh, yes you know Mr. Demachy is uh, is helping Aqua di Parma and uh, but he has a lot of things to do also for another major brand that he works for. <laughs> yeah, I think we know the one you mean. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but what I was going to say is, is there a reason why his name isn't mentioned so much? Is it because the, his name shouldn't be taken away from this other major brand? Or what is... is yes. yes, I mean, uh, he has to, to manage uh, the, two, the two brands. I mean, of course, uh, he's okay. doing something for us. I think uh, uh, he loves working with us because uh, we share as the other, the other major brand uh, the same value of quality and uh, originality and uh, everything. So we share uh, these uh, values. But uh, he, he, uh, sometimes he can, when we have a big events uh, and uh, presentation, he always... Uh, join us, but uh, he really has a lot of things to do <laughs> in his life. Uh, absolutely. Now, here's a, an interesting question um, um, from David Santiago. Thank you. Does Colonia Ambra have natural ambergris? Of course. Oh, okay. 
Oh, of course. Uh, yes. And uh, it has been not easy to find it. And this is, uh, I, again, I have I'll, to... I'll tell you why I'm, you know, reacting like that, because we had one comment, somebody here saying, no way can there be real ambergris in Aqua di Parma. Oh, no. No, no, okay. this again, we have to say thank you to Mr. Demachy because uh, he helped us to find uh, the supply chain, the right supply chain for amber grease because, uh, you know, amber grease is not something uh, you can uh, cultivate uh, in your uh, in your garden. I mean, uh, so it's... Uh, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to find that there are, and there are few people that uh, still are... Uh, I can say it's a searcher of ambergris. And uh, the, the, the thing is that uh, you just need a few uh, stones of ambergris to make a lot of tincture. So in terms of quantity, the, the, the amount is not that big. But uh, yes, yes, we have ambergris in, uh, in, our, uh, in our fragrance. Otherwise, uh, we would not uh, declare that uh, there is ambergris. We have a very... Um, tough uh, regulatory team uh, in Elvemash. We, if we say there is a really amber green, they, we have to send to our regulatory team a lot of papers signed by everyone. So, and no, I, well, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad we asked the question. Then, do you do you consider yourself to work for Aqua di Parma or for LVMH? <laughs> Aqua di Parma first. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> let's 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 do some let's do some more smelling and let's talk a little bit more about perfume because another one that it would be worth mentioning is the one from last year, Futura, the Colo the Futura version of Colonia. I'll t as I'm uh, spraying this here and smelling it, maybe you can talk to us a little bit about it. I'll tell you one thing that I was struck by with this release is that even though it's called Futura and there are lots of reasons for that, I suppose. In, in terms of its structure, in terms of its olfactory profile, it just to me seemed so wonderfully classical and really kind of almost going back. So tell us about the story of the development of that one and, you know, how the name came about and how you decided to go for this particular smell. Hello, the, so the name Futura comes from our sustainability program. The, which is named Futura. And uh, uh, this is a fragrance 9% made of natural origin ingredient. And uh, as far as I know, is one the first uh, or one of the first in the market with uh, this high percentage of, um, of natural origin ingredient. So the names come from here and from the sustainability project. And the, the, with the, this fragrance, we wanted the reality to, is, is a declaration of love for nature, for us, this fragrance. Uh, nature is able to give us a fantastic gift, like uh, this ingredient we have in the fragrance, the clarisage, the citrus, the vetiver, all these notes. And uh, with uh, this scent, we want to thank nature and uh, engage ourselves to preserve it for the future to create our beautiful uh, fragrances. So this is uh, the story behind uh, Futura. It was uh, really a, a project uh, created to, uh, ex to, to ground our sustainability project and uh, um, let's say to, to magnify what nature can give us. So we don't have uh, any base, any uh, synthetic molecule. So it's clear that uh, with the fragrance made like this uh, and uh, um, diluted in alcohol at high percentage, because uh, uh, there is a lot of fragrance inside that, uh, that uh, alcohol, uh, we had to work on an olfactive pyramid that was not totally uh, 
um, destructive because at the end of the ingredient of natural origin without uh, any chemical molecule are that one. And even if uh, we have a special quality ingredient, which are the ones selected by Mr. Demachy, I mean, the, 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 it's, a, it's a twist. But I find modernity in, um, in Colonia Futura, uh, in, the, in the vibrant top note that this perfume has. So, and in the in is in its verticality. So this uh, you have these top notes that brings also the vetiver that we have in the in the dry down uh, this clary sage, uh, which I think is not that obvious. No, I, th I, th I think I've, as far as I'm aware, it was a very successful release last year, and rightly so. There's at least one fan here. You are saying love Futura from opening to dry down, beautiful to me. Um, the, 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 the perfume industry at the moment, Paola, is struggling a little bit, I think it has to be said, maybe in the same, same as all industries around the world. What can we do to get people to wear more perfume, to buy more perfume, to fall in love with perfume again? But I, I give you my personal vision do create a quali qualitative product. So uh, really can and be meaningful for consumer. Today, I think that uh, people buy product that have a purpose, that have a quality. They don't buy product just uh, for uh, easy consumption. So uh, if... Uh, uh, the industry is able to deliver this message of uh, purpose. Why are we here? Why M me as an in industry, I'm here. Why you should uh, come to me and uh, buy my product? We have to, to put ourselves this question. And uh, if we correctly answer this question, I think uh, people uh, can uh, really enjoy again uh, the pleasure to wear perfumes, uh, buy perfumes, uh, and also understand that perfumes are not only the alcoholic solution you put on your skin, but perfumes are the candles you have in your house, the, the body cream you put on yourself, we should also really bring the dream in, in the scent again. So perfumes are really emotion. Perfumes are art composition. They have to speak to the soul of the people. They don't, do, they don't need to be efficient. It's not like a watch that has to, be, to work properly. They need to, to have a spirit, to have a soul. And we need uh, to be more original than in the past when we had a big uh, blockbuster, but then for 10 years we smelled the same um, fragrance everywhere. No? So I think uh, there are different ways to, depending on the, on the company, because there are more niche company, larger company, and so on. So, but I think that first the purpose, so why I'm here, we have to answer this question, and uh, let uh, the consumer bring uh, dream and uh, emotion and really uh, think that uh, through the fragrance, uh, they really can open uh, their mind and... Uh, and feel better. Just, just an example. Last year, when uh, we were do, producing the Spugnatura, okay, the fragrance was already closed, but, but honestly, working on a such beautiful project, rich of uh, difficulties, but that need patience and so really help us to pass that three terrible months when we were closed at home. 
and smelling uh, spugnatura. Then we had uh, some other novelties coming. So of course we had the pleasure of the candles we had at home. So all this help us to to pass that horrible period. So fragrances are uh, are really important in in our life. I think. No, and and I guess what you're saying it. I don't want to make it sound like a cliche, but it's almost like a sort of re-evaluation that everybody is doing in a way, you know, what are our priorities? What what are yes. we going to invest in? What are we not going to invest in? Absolutely. Uh, no, I thank you for that. You told me before we went live that you consider yourself to be not even just the mother, but the grandmother of <laughs> Granio. Due to my age. <laughs> no, well, well, it's it's suiting you, it's continue using them then. And I know, I know whenever you ask perfumers, whenever you ask brand representatives to choose a favorite, they say, no, no I can't because they're all my children. But exactly. is, there, is there a Blue Mediterraneo for whom you have a special affection? No, no, <laughs> no, you can't. It's really because you spend, you, you, I mean, Whenever you re release something, you, I mean, me and the team with me and the, 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 the company, uh, I mean, it's your baby. It's a baby of the company. It's a, you can't say, I prefer this or that. There are moments for each of them in our life. There are moments for Bergamotto, for Arancia, for Mandolo, also for Cipresso. I mean, there is a moment. And uh, we think that... Uh, I, I don't have a, a real preference, let's say. That's fine. I'll let, I'll, I'll let you have that. Paola, I can't thank you enough for your time. Thank you so much for giving up your uh, Friday evening um, when I'm sure it must be pleasure. nice. The, the pleasure is all ours, honestly. And thank you very much to all of you for tuning in and for asking uh, such wonderful questions. I will leave you with one final question. You're probably not going to tell us the answer, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Where roughly in Italy, which region do we think the Blue Mediterraneo might take us to next? <laughs> in a region where I can't find a, an interesting ingredient. Ah. <laughs> this is a real problem. I have a region and I'm looking for the ingredient. <laughs> okay, so the region works, but... There's nothing that smells very interesting there. That's nothing very, let's say, emblematic and good smelling at the same time. So uh, it's, <laughs> we have to put, it seems easy, but it's not easy. <laughs> well, I'm pleased I asked. I actually, I like that answer because the next time something comes out, we'll be wondering whether that was the one. <laughs> thank you very much thank you so much is there any any last words you'd like to sort of say to to, to people watching paula it, it would you it, it, um, uh, would you like to say goodbye to the audience or are you so thank you so much to everybody and uh maybe for the next series we will meet again and thank you to you for inviting me to this uh, beautiful conversation not at all, not at all. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you very much and thank you to all of you for watching. Take care and be good and I will see you soon. Bye now.